Please be careful on the plains, apprentice. Cat hounds are about. Those damn Mandalorians have been raiding farms all over this continent. The Jedi won't do anything, so where does that leave us? You know those stones to the east of here? I heard they did some digging and found they aren't natural. I heard that the Sith have destroyed Taurus. This bodes ill for us. It is good sometimes to stop and reflect on the beauty of nature and the Force. I am sorry. I tend to get carried away. I do not believe we have met, Apprentice. My name is Nemo. Is there something I can help you with? Indeed. What is it you would like from me? The Council has told you nothing of the Grove? Then it would not be my place to explain its significance. But as the light side can be embodied in living beings, so can the dark. The grove can be found to the south and east in the plains, but be wary of cathounds. They may be agitated by the power in the grove. Is there something else I can help you with? Very well. What is it you wish to know? Ah, yes, those caves. Those caves are dangerous for the unwary. Kinrath spiders infest the places. They are attracted by the colors and heat given off by the crystals, I think. It is a pity. Those caves are strong with the Force. Is there something else I can help you with? About me? I am truly flattered. What is it you wish to know? The importance you put in a name is misleading, young one. You, of all people, should remember that. Is there something else I can help you with? I hope your time is well spent here on Dantooine. Yeah? What? Hello. I'm afraid I'm not very good at explaining things. If you have any questions, please ask my husband. Yeah, what do you want? I was one of the best youth warriors in the Clan Ordo in my time. No one before me had mastered the power of our Basilisk war droids as quickly as I had. Except Mandalore himself, of course. In those days, we were sweeping across the Outer Rim, destroying all who fought us. Young Mandalores would prove themselves in real combat with unknown opponents above a thousand worlds. Each brought back stories of his achievements. I remember it well, orbiting high above a placid world, its defenses just stirring. As was tradition, I would go ahead of the first wave to find enemies in the thickest fighting. I remember sitting there in my armor, linked directly with a basilisk thrumming beneath me. My heart racing with fear of the coming battle. Every new warrior has to fear to understand how to beat it. You must know that. The doors opened in front of me, and the air was sucked out of the drop base, scattering crystals of frozen vapor across my path. I can't describe what it feels like to look directly down at a world, falling continuously as you circle it with barely 15 centimeters of armor plate protecting you. When the magnetic locks disengaged on my droid, 
I plunged out of the drop bay towards the battle that waited below. The exhilaration, the euphoria I felt as I streaked into the atmosphere, dodging self-guided projectiles and beam weapons, was unmatched. An 80-kilometer plunge through the atmosphere, dodging and weaving, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry. And with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the surface, firing at the giant beam generators that were in my path. The explosion from that sent shock waves that leveled the entire complex around it. It was the moment of my life. I'll never forget those times. But things are different now. We can't go on fighting the way we did. There are too few of us left now. But I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I trust I've satisfied your curiosity for now. Is there something else you want to know? Your choice. I'm here. Yes, what's on your mind? I thought I said I don't want to talk about it anymore. Cute. Nice to know you're so full of concern. Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt, though. I, I don't know why you're so interested. When I think of all the men who betrayed us, the one that stands out above all of them is the one that I respected the most. Saul. You don't. I thought everyone did. But Admiral Saul Carath is the commander of the entire Sith fleet. He's half the reason Malak has done so well in the war. Saul was my commanding officer back when the Mandalorian Wars first began. He taught me everything about being a soldier, and I looked up to him. Saul approached me before he left. He talked to me about how the Republic was on the losing side and about how I should start thinking of my survival. I know now that he was trying to recruit me into the Sith, but I couldn't have conceived of it back then. I, I argued with him, and he got angry, and he left. I never saw him again. Saul was my mentor. He led us to so many victories against the Mandalorians. I mean, even when things looked to be at their worst, I just, I couldn't conceive of it. He, he couldn't be serious. I was wrong, of course. He not only left us for the Sith, he, he gave them the codes to bypass our scanners. I remember waking up as the first of the Sith bombers snuck past our defenses and began destroying half of our dock ships. I knew right away what had happened. I mean, I could have stopped him. I, I could have stopped it all. I blame Saul, not myself. I was, I was stupid, and I ignored the danger. He nearly destroyed us all. No, I fought Saul for years now, and if I ever catch up to him, he will regret what he's done. He will regret it. No, no, it's not. But I don't want to talk about it right now. Let's go. Greetings, friend. I think I can safely assume you are a member of the Jedi Order. Has the Council agreed to hear our petition? Oh, I'm sorry. I was mistaken. Does the Council require our presence? Oh, I see. I am mistaken. How may I be of assistance? My name is Gar. Me and my fine wife Rilke here... A pleasure. ...live on one of the northern farms, but... The cat hounds and the Mandalorian problem has been getting really bad of late, and we're here to ask the Jedi Council to help. Well, as you can see, Dantooine is mostly plains and grassland, but it has a nice hearty soil. A lot of new people have come in the last generation or so. Hmm? No, the ones you'll most likely hear about are the Sandals and the Matalis. Big, wealthy landowners, both of them. But Alan Matali and Nurik Sandril just can't seem to get along. And now Alan wants to get the council to do something. Well, from what I hear, it started about a week ago. See, Nurik's son, Cassis, is an archaeologist. Bright lad, too, but he disappeared. Nurik, of course, blamed Alan, but even he didn't take it before the council. But now Alan's son, Shen, has disappeared as well. And no one knows where he's gone. Alan blames Nurik. He thinks he's kidnapped his son. I don't know exactly what he wants to ask the council, but from what I know of Alan, he's probably going to be after blood. Is there anything else you require? Ever since the Republic beat them years ago, 
Little groups have been roaming all over the place. They're pathetic. They're taking scraps when they should be taking worlds. With the Sith invasion, the Republic doesn't have the manpower to hunt them down. The Jedi are even worse off because Malak has been hunting them specifically. They're worried that he might even be supporting these raiders. So, don't want to face them directly. That puts us in a kind of hard situation. Is there anything else I can help you with? Recently, the Cat Hounds have been acting much more aggressively. They've even attacked some of the settlers. Those Mandalorian raiders have been milking the outlying farms dry, too. I hear John got hit really bad. Too bad about his daughter. He should have been protecting her better if he wanted to keep her. Mandalorian beast. Some of us don't like fighting and killing and butchering as much as you. I'm not sure exactly what the Council will do about it, but we need some help with this. I only hope they'll listen to me. Is there anything else you require? Farewell, then. May the Force be with you. Is that how it goes? Yeah. May the Force be with you. Are you a Jedi? How long can you people continue to sit by and claim you protect us? Protectors? Ha! You sit in your enclave safe from the Mandalorians while we suffer. No. They've been raiding planets across this sector and farms around here often. You Jedi have left them alone because they haven't harmed you. But they steal our property, destroy our land. Worse. I say we look for these Mandalorians. I fought them in the war. They're nothing but vicious pirates. We should, we should stop them if we can. Those Mandalorian brutes have killed my daughter. You should have protected her better. And you call yourself her father. And what am I supposed to do against a dozen Mandalorians and Duros? Nothing. There was nothing I could do. They came to our land demanding our livelihood. But Ilsa, my Ilsa, said no. There was nothing I could do. Too many of the Mandalorians and their Duro's allies. I come here to ask you, please, Master Jedi, stop these raiders and get revenge for my daughter. But you have been accepted into the Order. Yours is the authority of the Jedi. I will give you all I have. Just please. Annihilate them from the face of this planet. La boda ni wikis matoma. Wana kun bes chingpa ma rulira. Tok chingbang non kit. Tok ninja mira ra bes. Kuya mi just kuna chitanai. Yina kun ma ma rulira ra chikun. Slimo patona. Mundi ha donga chikonkabi. Uba batu kochi. Tong Nong Bong Chang Nung Yang, Tong Katok Smak Delia, Yatuka Uluan King Kun Naba Murira, Rachi Kun, Mucha Shang Pampa, La Boda Ni Winkis Mak Toma, Wana Kun Bes Ching Pa Ma Murira, Tok Ching Bang Non Kek, Tok Ning Cha Murira Ra Bes, Uba Batu Kochi, Tong Nong Bong Chang Nung Yang, Tong Katok Smak Delia, La Boda Ni Winkis Mak Toma, Wana Kun Bes Ching Pa Ma Murira, Please be careful on the plains of... The council's been telling us not to go near the stones to the east. Just as well, the calf hounds near there seem a lot more vicious. Dantooine looks peaceful enough, but packs of calf hounds roam these plains. We need to keep our guard up while we're out here. Greetings, young Jedi. I wonder if you could assist me. I seem to have lost my... companion, you see? We were working on my farm to the north of here. I was working in the garden outside, and he was working inside. I heard the door to the house open, but not closed. I went to see, and found it wide open. I searched everywhere and could not find him. I worry so much. I need him back so badly. I wonder if... He... could he have been kidnapped? Not that I know of. Um, none of my neighbors really know he's there. Maybe it was the Mandalorians. Or maybe Cath Hounds. But no, Cath Hounds are not intelligent enough to open doors. Although they have been more vicious lately. No, it must have been someone who could open the door by himself. Come to think of it, the door was locked. 
Well, yes, it could have, but he had no reason to run away. His programming... Well, yes, he is a droid, but he is very valuable to me all the same. He's the last piece of my poor passed away husband that I have left. He is very dear to me, my precious is. I don't know what I'd do without him. He's the only companionship I have on all of Dantooine. He is a personal assistance droid. My husband was a genius at constructing droids. He made this one capable of taking care of me for the rest of my life. As the last legacy of my husband, for my own personal ease of mind, I need him back. His absence gnaws at me like a gaping wound. Wow, she really misses her droid, doesn't she? Please, I beg of you, return my droid to me. Thank you. Thank you, Master Jedi. If you find him, please send him home to me. I need him so much. ชีวะเอฟไอตากันที่ชานาจุปรนิโบคุณมุลีราสนิโมชีวิไอตากัดชงจิจาอากีอุโตตุเนตองคิดว่ามาอากีอุโตตุเนตองตองคิดว่าม
Yes, what's on your mind? Dantooine's a boring place. It's all plains and herders and small settlements. Perfect for the Jedi to lose themselves in, I guess. Well, that's all I can think of, at any rate. You got it. Yeah, what do you want? You want another war story, huh? You want to hear about some other world getting wasted, eh? I knew you were the type. Your stagnant Republic has never seen some of the strange creatures and races we fought on the Outer Rim in those years. <laughs> and you never will now. We were going through the asteroid fields of the Crispin system at the very edge of the galaxy, playing with the pirates and smugglers we found there. The main belt in the Crispin system consists of mainly small rocks covered in frozen methane gas shells, and the pirates were using them for cover. Ha! <laughs> I remember using a thermal generator to cause the outer layer of one of the asteroids to vaporize in a picosecond. It blew out and shredded the three smugglers using it for cover. But that was a mistake. The asteroid I had targeted was smaller than most, maybe a dozen meters on a side. On the outside, it looked the same as any other. Just a ball covered in frozen gas. But something must have been inside it. Something inactive, in the cold. The heat of my blast might have triggered something, or woken something up. After I'd hit it, spots of light and heat appeared all over the thin shell, still covering it, evaporating the gases. What lay underneath looked like some sort of rocky growth. A deformed rock, pitted by scores of micrometeorite scars. I think something even older might have been inside that. Maybe. But maybe not. It started rotating faster and faster as we watched it. After a second, it started spraying fire. Thermal projectiles that melted our armor like wax. We were caught completely by surprise. Before we could counterattack, it fled at an incredible speed. We couldn't catch it, but we could follow its hyperspace wake. We followed its trail as far as we could, heading away from the galactic core. When it finally led beyond the edge of our galaxy, we abandoned our efforts. Anything that wants to commit suicide in that great void is not worth our trouble trying to catch. Uh, that's the only story I have for now. I'll tell you some more stuff later if we get the chance. Is there something else you want to know? Your choice.
enough money, I guess we're gonna have to take it out of you piece by piece. No, please! Take my wife and children instead. Anything! <laughs> uh, wife and children. Sounds like a good idea. Down you go! Another Jedi, huh? Helping that Twi'lek investigate, no doubt. He seems stumped. I'm Rickard Lusoff. Maybe you can figure this out and let me get out of here. Well, I was out hunting Iriaz when I spotted one over here by the bridge. I pull out my rifle and aim at it. I couldn't see it that well, mind you, because the damn sun was in my eyes. So I shoot it and it drops. 
I walk over here and find Handed standing over Calder's body. So why don't you get this whole farce over with and send that whiner Handed to the prison he belongs in? Ah, greetings. You must be assisting Master Baluk in his investigation. I'm Handed Ghoul. Perhaps you've heard of me? Um, I, I guess under the circumstances, no. Well, I presume you wish to hear my story, then. I shall tell you, of course, but there's not much to it. I'm sure that you'll agree that Rickard is quite obviously guilty of murder. You see, I was out here running earlier today. Yes, running. I do that a lot. Can't stand speeders, never use them. Keeps me in shape, too, you know. Anyway, I was out running on the other side of that bridge there, and all of a sudden I heard a shot coming from over here. I ran over and found this man, Calder, lying on the ground, dead. And I saw Rickard come skulking out of the shadows of a rock south of the river, and I knew something was wrong. I hit my emergency button and called the enclave right away. Well, there. That's my story. Now, please hurry this up and arrest Rickard so I can get on with my day. Uh, どんなディコトンガ Tong <laughs> So, what do you want to know? Yeah, I knew him. Hell, we've known each other for a good long time. Doesn't mean I really have to have liked this slime ball. <sighs> Maybe I shouldn't be so hard on him. Especially now that he's dead. We actually got along pretty well most of the time. We just had our differences. We were actually business partners. We were involved in some orbit-to-ground transport operations for Aerotech. Can I leave now? I should probably be the one to give the news to his wife. So... I told you already, didn't I? Was hunting some eerie ass. Haven't seen many in the area recently, but with those calf hounds acting up. But they're still around. Was in my blind a little south of here when I spotted one, like I said before. I shot and pow, went down. But when I come over here, there's Handed standing over the body and the Iriaz was gone. Now I don't have nothing to do with this, so can I go now? Ah. So. You Jedi are so predictable, always seeing some greater purpose behind everything, when the simple answer is usually the right one. Can't you see that it must have been Handon? I found him standing over the damned body. I don't know why this is causing you so much trouble. You almost seem as lost as this Baluk guy. So, what do you... Well, I kind of sprained my ankle running through the bush before I found the body, but it's nothing that serious. Right. How can I be of further assistance? I know him a little bit, but I was not any sort of great friend to him or anything. I never really associated with him that much. In truth, I didn't really want to. He had a... reputation. A very inconsiderate of family, I heard. But merely having heard unkind things about someone wouldn't make me want to kill him. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting a bit agitated. Why must we remain here? Can't you see that Rickard must have shot him? How can I be of further assistance? Um, well, you see, 
Calder was involved in some pretty sordid business from time to time. More often than not, I've heard. Disreputable business practices, even more disreputable clients. I've even heard he had dealings with a hut. A hut here on Dantooine. Now, I bet you're wondering if I had any reasons to kill the man, but I tell you, I hardly knew him. I saw him once or twice, yes, and I've heard some pretty unkind things about him, but certainly nothing that would make me want to kill him. How can I be of further assistance? In injured? No, of course not. But why would I have been? Fit as a bantha. <laughs> I run, I don't know if I mentioned that. How can I be of further assistance? I was taking my daily constitutional. I just happened to be running by when I heard a shot. I ran over and found Calder's body lying there. Yes, quite often. I generally prefer running to anything else. Can't stand speeders. A healthy body will breed a healthy mind, as I always say. <laughs> of course, of course. Listen, if you need anything, I shall be glad to assist. Oh. <laughs> One kun bez ching palamule ka chi kun ita hodonga i king kuno unda di hodonga kun hanka di one kun bez chik unda di hodonga kun hanka di. ジェドバドワナニディボボ。モチシャッパカン。ゴンダディホトンガクンハンカディ。ジェドバドワナニディボトンハイトワンジジジョンプロンパ。ニタポエティキト。ドルパダボンゴレオガン。ゴンダディ
I was just out running, trying to clear my head for the divorce proceedings, not stalking him to kill him. Running is not a crime. Of course, of course. So. Now, I don't love Calder, but we go back a long way. We run a suborbital shipping and transport company out of Garang Spaceport. We've been partners in that business for well over 20 years, and we've been doing just fine the way we are. Right. Oh. Is there any other information you need? We cannot get any more specific analysis from that sample, other than the fact it did not belong to Calder. Is there any... Very well. So, that blaster? Never seen it before. Calder himself had a preference for Ichani weaponry. He had this one really nice light blaster rifle that he always used. Always wished I could get myself a rifle like the one he had. Ichanis make delicate weapons with too little firepower. Lightweight stuff, if you ask me. That blaster ain't it, though. Calder only had the one rifle, too. So he either must have borrowed that, or it's someone else's. Right. How can I be of further assistance? That blaster was stolen from my house last week. I never knew what happened to it. I hardly have enough money to afford a single blaster, let alone another. I can't tell you how important it is to have a weapon on hand with all these ravenous cath hounds around. Even an Eries can take a man down if it gets in the mood. Every settler has a weapon. It's our most prized possession. I would most appreciate it if I could have that back after you determine that Rickard is the killer. How can I be of further assistance? I can block off, maybe, sure, but not kill him. Uh, I hope you don't find that incriminating. You know, normally, I'm not prone to outbursts like that, but Calder... Mr. Nedick, he was not a very nice person. Not a very nice person to me or my family. I had had my suspicions for several weeks, but had no proof until two days ago. It seems Calder was seeing my wife, right under my nose, no less. Well, if you can't keep her, it's your own fault. But, as much as I may hate him for that, I could not kill him. It may have been my own fault for driving my wife away. I was just out running. Of course. Is there any... I am sorry, but I seem to be failing you. I have searched and searched, but I cannot seem to come up with anything at all. I thought to find the record of the missing weapon report Mr. Gould filed with the authorities, but there does not seem to be one. Is there any... We cannot get any more. Is there? My pen. Is there? Hey. So, what do you want to know? Now I don't. We've been. That blast always. Hey, Johnny's. That. Bro. How can I be? A... That blaster was hardly ever even an. I would most. How can I? I can get it. Well, but it. Oh. 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 
Is there any other? I have just received back an analysis of a sample of the blood found on the weapon. It had been sent back to the Empire just before you arrived. The blood on the weapon is definitely not Calder's. Unfortunately, there was a bacterial contaminant in the sample that had been taken back to the laboratory, and it had become degraded. We cannot get any more specific analysis from that sample other than the fact it did not belong to Calder. Is there any other information? Hey. How can I be a fruit? Of course. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Tolbank, Waleo Ganda Naru, Kachikun Ita Hodonga, Yikin Kuno Pamuli, Runda di Hodonga Kun Hunka B, Wana Kun Be, Tong Haid Wong Jiji Jung Lumpa, Nita Poe Tikito, Tolpa da Bong Waleo Gandona Chu Chu, Damn you, Damn both of you, Takunju Stach Miki, Grabble Mogo, Kachichu Ita Hodonga, Tolbank. Waleo Ganda Naru Chuchut. Mogesha Ka Chikun Ita Hodonga. I King Kun Tong Hait Wong Jiji Jung Lumpa. Nita Poe Tikitu. Dolpha da Bong Waleo Gando Nan Chuchu. You did good. You might just make a proper Jedi yet. Who knows? A Chuta. Wonga Kun Bis Dolpi Kikuya.
Grove. This is the place of my dark power. This is the place you have invaded. When I embraced the dark side, this is where I sought my solace. It is mine. When I slew my master, Quatra, I knew I could never go back. And now I revel in my dark power. Power enough to crush the life from someone such as you. Or so I had thought. What is it you want? Why do you bother me? The Council has sent you here to kill me. Why then, when you bested me so easily, did you not simply finish your task? Is it not apparent that I can never be saved? You... you do not? I am pathetic. I sit here and think myself to be great by embracing the dark side, but I am nothing. There is no way I could be turned back. I always thought they held me back, or jealous of my power. This is only because I was not good enough to meet their standards. I never have been. I thank you for your kind words, Jedi. I seem to still have much to learn, both about being a Jedi and about myself. But I wish the cost of my ignorance had not been so high. I wish that my master had not suffered because of me. I only wish things could have been different. If she were alive now, there would be so much I would say to her. So much I would apologize for. How can the Council ever take me back with what I have done? Striking my master down in anger is unforgivable. I should convince them that I am truly repentant. That I am willing to forsake the dark side. And maybe, just maybe, they would accept me back. Do you think they would? Could it be possible after what I have done? I thank you, Master Jedi. I will return to the Council then. I shall submit myself to their judgment and hope they will forgive me. Again, I thank you. I am sure I will hear great things about you in the future.
You have done a great thing. One of our own had strayed, but you have returned Juhani to the Order. For this, you deserve the highest praise. I must give you my thanks. Because of you, I am once again welcome within the Jedi Order. I have spoken to the Council, and they have helped me see the truth. The truth about myself, and the truth of my actions. Quatra's injuries were not so severe as I first believed. I was foolish to believe I could harm a master such as she with my, my clumsy efforts. The fierce confrontation between us was nothing more than part of my training. Quatra wanted me to understand the threat of the dark side, to see how easy it was to fall from the path of light. Quatra's methods may seem strange, but I trust her wisdom. This lesson has been difficult, but I am better because of it. Humility is never easy to teach. But now, I truly understand my own limitations. You can't expect to get everything handed to you on a silver platter. After our last battle, Quatra had nothing left to teach me. I needed time alone to explore the turmoil of my own spirit. Only then was I ready to follow a guide. You, back to the light. When I left, Quatra knew her work with me was done. There are other disciples who need training throughout the galaxy. And she could not stay to see if I passed this most difficult trial. With your help, I have passed this difficult trial. The Council now feels I am ready to continue with my training. Though they have asked me to wait here for the time being. First the Jedi trick you into becoming an enemy, then they welcome you back as a friend. I can't say I approve of their training methods. Giving you a second chance like this is a clear sign of weakness. Sometimes I find it hard to believe the Jedi could defeat my people in battle. I do not know what the Council has in store for me, but I will trust in the Force and the way of the Jedi to help me through whatever is to come. Kakin cha na kwat na bon kon wana kumbes chi pala mulek tongki pa na nonek hakunji kapa mucha shak pangpa yinking you have done well my pupil the ancient grove has been purified and juhani's journey down the dark path has been halted because of you she walks once more in the light but though she was saved do not dismiss what happened to her. Juhani is both dedicated and true to the ideals of the Order, yet she was still vulnerable to the dark side, as are we all. She struck her master in anger during her training and injured her greatly. But it was Quatra's choice to test Juhani this way, and it seems to have made its point. Juhani has been redeemed, and you have passed your final test. Congratulations, apprentice. Or should I say... Congratulations, Padawan. You have proven yourself worthy of joining the Jedi. Let me be the first to welcome you as a full-fledged member of our Order. If you have questions, you should direct them toward the Jedi Council members. I must congratulate you on your actions. You have saved Johanny and brought her back into the Order, and have given us all great hope for your future success. May the Force be with you as you continue your training. For good or ill, you are now a true Padawan. The time has come for you and Bastilla to investigate the dream you shared. The secrets to stopping Malak may lie hidden within the ancient Dantooine ruins you both saw in your visions. Greetings, young Padawan. Have you come seeking knowledge of the past? Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Or so they say. As a chronicler of the Academy here on Dantooine, I feel it is my duty to share the history of our Order with the newly initiated. Unfortunately, our recent history is one of tragedy and bloodshed. The Mandalorian Wars, the fall of Revan and Malak, the rise of the Sith, 
There are important lessons to be learned from these events, if we do not wish to repeat the mistakes of our past. This facility is a training academy. The archives here are restricted to those who have attained the rank of master. We must protect over-eager Padawans from being exposed to dangerous knowledge. The pursuit of knowledge is a noble goal, but there are some things that require the wisdom of a master to truly understand. If you are seeking information on Revan, Malak, and the Sith, I will gladly recount the recent history of our order to you. Of course, I could not tell you the entire history of our order. The Jedi have existed for thousands upon thousands of years. We are as old as the Republic itself. Instead, I will begin 40 years ago with the War of Exar Kun. Like Malak and Revan, Exar Kun was a Jedi who fell to the dark side and led an army against the Jedi and the Republic. Exar Kun was defeated, but the war left both the Republic and our own order severely weakened. For 20 years, we struggled to rebuild, trying to erase the scars of the terrible conflict. All things in time. You shall learn that history is an intricate weaving of many events. No one thing can be understood without the proper context. 20 years ago, the Mandalorians, aware that the Republic was in a weakened state, began conquering small worlds on the Outer Rim. They were careful to choose only planets outside the Republic's jurisdiction. After much debate, the Senate chose not to intervene. As long as the Mandalorians avoided planets that were members of the Republic itself, there would be no retaliation. Well, you can hardly blame the Republic. The memory of war was fresh in everyone's mind. Nobody was eager to relive the horrors in a campaign against the Mandalorians. But in the end, it was unavoidable. The Mandalorians stockpiled resources from their conquered worlds, preparing for massive assault. Seven years ago, they launched a simultaneous attack in three separate sectors of Republic space. The Senate had no choice but to retaliate with the entire Republic fleet. The Mandalorian Wars had begun. The Republic petitioned the Jedi Council for aid, but there were many factors to consider before we allowed ourselves to be drawn into another conflict so soon after the war with Exar Kun. While the Jedi Council preached patience, there were many among our order who were eager for us to join the battle. Two young knights in particular demanded immediate action, Revan and Malak. They rallied many of the Jedi to their cause, and against the wishes of their masters, joined the Republic fleet battling the Mandalorians. Revan was a brilliant military leader, and the Republic fleet began to win victory after victory. Four years ago, the Mandalorians surrendered unconditionally. No one is denying that Revan was one of the keys to defeating the Mandalorians. But something happened out there on the Outer Rim. Instead of returning after the war's end, the ships under Revan's command went deep into unexplored space. They claimed to be searching for the last remnants of the Mandalorian fleet. All contact was lost. For many months, it was assumed some great disaster had befallen the entire fleet. Everyone thought they were dead. There were unsubstantiated rumors of Revan and Malak being seen on a number of different planets during these months, scattered sightings that were never confirmed. Perhaps they simply went far beyond the edges of Republic space. Maybe they found previously undiscovered hyperspace routes to the ends of the galaxy. Nobody knows for certain. Three years ago, Revan and Malak returned at the head of a massive invasion fleet. Revan had assumed the title of Sith Lord. The hero had become a conqueror. Some of the ships in the Sith fleet are those that were under Revan's command during the Mandalorian Wars. But many more are of an alien design we've never seen before. The source of this massive fleet is one of the many things about the Sith we cannot explain. It seems impossible to have created it in such a short time, yet we cannot deny its existence. The source of the Sith soldiers is unfortunately much easier to understand. Initially, the bulk of the force were former Republic soldiers who had served under Revan. With each conquest, thousands more flocked to join the invaders, swelling their numbers. Even many of our own order have betrayed us. 
lured by Sith promises of riches and power. For two years, the Sith were all but invincible. Fortunately, Bastila and her battle meditation allowed the Republic to win a few key victories and kept the Sith from total triumph. In desperation, we set a trap for the Dark Lord. Bastila was with the strike team that tried to capture Revan, as you probably know. She was there at Revan's end. That was nearly a year ago, but things have not improved. Malak has stepped in and assumed the mantle of Dark Lord for himself, though he's far from Revan's equal in strategy or tactics. Still, his fleet continues to grow in both ships and soldiers. If we do not find some way to stop the Sith soon, Malak will overwhelm us with sheer numbers. Revan's tale shows us how even the greatest of Jedi can fall to the dark side. You must always be on guard against the evil that dwells within you. Think hard upon this lesson. May the Force be with you. It is good to see Johnny has returned to the Way of the Light. You are to be commended for your role in this. Your actions give us great hope for the future. Your training is now complete, Padawan. And perhaps now, it is time we dealt with the matter of the dream you and Bastila shared. When we heard of the ruins in your dreams, Master Dorok recognized it as one of a series of ancient structures here on Tantooine. This one in particular lies to the east of this enclave. We sent a Jedi to investigate, but he has not returned. Perhaps sending him in the first place was a mistake. The Force is guiding you through your visions. It may be that exploring the ruins is a task tied to your destiny. That is why the Council has now decided you should be the one to investigate this. The secrets to stopping Malak may be hidden within those ruins. You must investigate them and find what Revan and Malak were looking for. We do not know. That is one of the things you must investigate. We fear the worst. Is there anything else you want to know? Master Vuk may seem harsh and critical, but he understands the dangers that lie in your path. He wants you and Bastila to be fully prepared when you finally face Lord Malak. The way ahead will be difficult for young Bastila, and for you. But you must draw strength from each other. May the Force be with you. I demand justice! The Central Family is a blight upon Dantooine! They must be punished! The Council will look into this matter, Mr. Metale. You must be patient. Your accusations have no proof, and we do not want you stirring up trouble with the Sandrals if there is some mistake. Mistake? My son Shen is missing! How can there be any doubt the Sandrals are to blame? There are other possible explanations for your son's disappearance. Ah, you Jedi are good for nothing but talk. I shall only wait so long before I take action on my own. As dangerous as the threat from Darth Malak and the Sith may be, we Jedi cannot simply abandon our other responsibilities. The Council has promised, Alan Matali, we will look into a son's disappearance. Should you have time, Padawan, you may want to investigate this matter. These two families have been settled here for some years now. And causing me no end of trouble. Indeed. They have been settled here for some time, and feuding ever since. I do not know how the original feud started, but they want nothing to do with each other. As you may have heard, Alan Matali believes that his son, Shen, has been kidnapped by Nurik Sandral. Curiously, Nurik's son, Cassus, has been missing for some time as well. I fear Nurik may suspect Alon in this. Is there anything else you wish to know? The Sandral and Matali families are involved. The Sandrals live far to the south. The head of that family is Nurik Sandral. He is a stern man, but I believe him fair. Under the present circumstances, though, 
Who knows? Alan Matali can be much more unstable. He is convinced of his own importance and can be a most oppressive individual at times. He lives closer to the Enclave, but still to the south. Is there anything else you wish to know? I do not know how the original feud started, but they want nothing to do with each other. As you may have heard, Alan Matali believes that his son, Shen, has been kidnapped by Nurik Sandral. Curiously, Nurik's son, Cassus, has been missing for some time as well. Is there anything else? If Shen Matali has not returned to his father, it may ignite a savage and bloody feud between the Matali and Sandral estates. We must not allow that to happen. Your study and training are important, of course. But the Jedi are not a cloistered order. Our influence and teachings must spread beyond the walls of our academies. It is in our real world that we truly prove ourselves worthy of the title Jedi. You would do well to remember this young Padawan. Not to mention that I wouldn't mind getting out of this enclave for a bit. I mean, come on, how bad could it be? It was less of a dream and more of a vision, a vision the two of us shared, but I am certainly willing to answer any questions the Jedi Council did not. Are you wondering why we shared the vision, or why we even received it in the first place? To the first, I can only repeat the answer that the Council gave us. Our fates are linked, and for two as strong as we are in the Force, that amounts to a near physical bond. As to the second, I truly don't have an answer for you. The Force works as it will. And perhaps we should be grateful for what we've been given. I... I don't know. Believe me, I certainly don't find the prospect of being joined to you enjoyable in any fashion. The Force often seems to cause events that bend the laws of probability, especially with those that are strongly affiliated with it. In this respect, you and I will simply have to become accustomed to such convenience. We are the tools of the Force and we will do as it wills. Quite the contrary. Ours is the ultimate free will. The Force is our destiny, but the choices we make along it are ultimately our own. As you wish. You really should return our thoughts to business anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 